Hey there, welcome back to the Warbird Mistress. I realized I never did an answer video for the uh, the last quiz, so I'm just going to go over that real quick. The first one, uh, a lot of people got, and it said it had short origins. Well, I'm only five foot three without these things, so <laughs> the, uh, a lot of things have short origins, but in this case, it is the Mavis. Uh, it was designed in response to a Navy requirement of 1934 for a large flying boat. Uh, and it incorporated the knowledge that was gained by Kawanishi after they had visited the uh, short footage firm in the UK. Uh, and it really was a you know, figure between them and Fairy, which has short origins as well. Check out my video if you haven't. Um, you know, the leading producer of flying boats. Uh, they also built the H3K, which was codenamed the Bell, a biplane, uh, enlarged version of the short Rangoon, essentially. Now, that one became in turn the monoplane Mavis, uh, which was earlier than the Emily, and those were the two big flying boats going out there. So congratulations if you got that. The next one runs on Windows. And uh, like most Windows updates, it didn't do so well either. Uh, Bill Gates, please don't crash my computer. Anyway, the uh, that was the North American 047. Some people got that. It was a replacement for the Thomas Moore's 019 and the Douglas 038. Uh, they were both observation by planes, and they shared their origins in the Douglas O2. So the North American O47 was trying to eliminate the problem that you have with the wing. You know, you're not looking uh, at the top of your wing to get information. You want to look past that. So what they did, instead of having, uh, you know, just say a panel, they built a whole bunch of panels uh, in the bottom of it. And it was, it was arranged kind of like a torpedo bomber, like the Kate or the Avenger or even the Devastator. It was larger, it was heavier, it was a monoplane, and it had this giant gondola underneath. So the three of them sat, uh, the three crew members sat, you know, in this long canopy, and the observer radio operator had access to the belly. So the uh, the windows that were in there allowed a better downward view, photography, uh, but they ordered uh, in 1937, 1938, uh, 174 of them. Of those, 93 were earmarked for the National Guard. And then in 1938, they ordered another 74 047Bs. They had a new cowling, uh, better ventilation for an upgraded engine, and it had smaller, more efficient, and longer range radio equipment. Now, the problem was is that when they went to the Louisiana and they went to the Carolinas for the maneuvers before the war, the 047 just didn't, did, didn't hack it. Uh, it was okay, this job, but it wasn't really what they needed in an Army cooperation platform. That doesn't mean that she had a short career. She actually went on into the war as a patrol aircraft and anti-submarine platform. So, in fact, if you follow the uh, walk through the war, which uh, if you want to pick it up in December, then the 7th is the day. Uh, definitely follow that through and you'll see the 047 was in a lot of places. Now, another mount of plane that some of you guessed correctly, some of them were a little off. It's, it's hard, it is harder to tell from a top-down view. It was the uh, Embraer 65. This was Italy's only real ground attack aircraft during the war of any significance. You can see those unique horizontal stabilizers and the shape kind of give it away. It was a derivative of the Breda 27 fighter, which led to the painfully awkward Breda 64. And the 65 never overcame... Uh, the Breda 64's problems. It inherited a lot of the physical qualities, um, especially like the cockpit's far forward placement, uh, but it also inherited most of the negative qualities. Uh, the real issue in the design was that she just wasn't really structurally capable of doing her role. She was underpowered. Her uh, Fiat A80 engine was just terrible. It uh, She wasn't really able to put up with anything past Spain. In fact, I think 11 or 12 were lost in Spain. Uh, they left a dozen, it was, I think a dozen, with the Spanish Air Force. Uh, and they actually hoped to replace them before the war ever came. But she was kept in service by really just lackluster Italian options. The Caproni CA-130 um, just didn't really hack it as an attack aircraft. The Savoy Market, the SM-85, was less than desirable, and then there was the stupefyingly poor performance of Breda's B-88 Lynch. It was anything but a Lynx. It was just, I mean, it wouldn't even take off in its original configuration with its weapons and everything. 
So the BA-65 was kept in service through East Africa and North Africa. Uh, eventually, it was just replaced by fighters, uh, as well as the, you know, the ubiquitous SM-79 Sparriero, and of course the Junkers U-87 Stuka, which interestingly enough, uh, one of my favorite Italian words, it was the Stuka was known as the uh, Picciatello, and the only way I could describe that word is somebody who is beyond eccentric and just crazy, um, touched, lost the plot, out of it, just, uh, <laughs> you know, the guy with a a sailor hat, rubber boots, and you know, a uh, sitting out in the middle of the desert, looking at buzzards and telling you that uh, you know the snow's coming. It's, it's not, <laughs> but then again, if you're willing to dive it, you know, the, those angles into God knows what, let alone the fact that they trained in the Alps. But you know what? That's going to be a video for another day. The uh, the Bicchiatelli, uh in Italy. But anyway, so that was the Breda sixty five. Uh, Another quiz will be coming up, of course. Uh, I think the series is good. I just kind of let it go. My hours at work have been all over the place. Um, and we're going to go from there. So thanks again to all my patrons. I did get, I think, two new patrons I have to mention by name. I'll try to do that at the end here when I go through the editing. Other than that, I am home. And it's time for me to relax and start working on the Coast Guard Part 2 video or the last two chapters of Blue Fox at Sea or whatever else you guys want to uh, tell me I should focus on. Until then, I'm Claire, and I am the Warbird Mistress. <laughs> Take care.